Okay, in this video, we're going to move forward. We set up our column grid and levels. In the first video, we've moved on and we've inserted our columns. Now we're going to put in some of the beams that we have in our project. But there's a couple things we need to do. I want to open up my structural plans and we're going to do this in our structural plan view. But here I'm only seeing my level three, my top of parapet level. Hmm, I'd actually like to work in my top of steel level. This is where we're going to insert these beams first. And you'll you'll realize we don't have any steel that's actually going to be inserted at our top of parapet level. So I want to use it. The first thing I want us to do is we don't see the top of steel level under structural plans. Now, I know why that is. When we used the level in the grid tool, we used it on the architectural tab. So it only set those views up by default under the architectural category, but we need a structural plan. So if I come up here to view, I want to click on plan views right here. And if I click this drop down and come down to structural plan, you'll see that we can actually add the structural plan for first floor and top of steel. If I hold down control, we'll just select both of these. And if I click okay here, now you'll see that my project browser populates with the other plan views that we'd like to see. So that's the first step. Just go ahead and make sure you have that top of steel level to work in. It's nice because as you insert your beams, when, when you're working from the proper plan view, they'll be inserted right at the elevation that is associated with that level. And that's where we want to be. So now let's come back to our structural tab and you'll see our beam tool. It's going to be a very similar process to the columns initially. What we want to do is make sure that we load the families that we need here. I know that we have a couple of beams that we need to insert. So I'm going to click on load family. And we're going to come on back down here to our structural framing, steel, and all the way back down to our wide flange. Now these are our beams and not our columns. So sometimes be careful. I know people get tricked up uh, with trying to use the wide flange steel columns as the beams and they're not available on your properties when you select them from the drop down. So we just want to make sure we come down to our structural framing and then wide flange. And I'm going to click and insert this. Now it brings up our catalog and we have a couple sizes that we need. So let's go ahead and select them. We need to make sure we have our W 16 by 31. So let's select that. We know we need our W 16 by 40. So if I hold down control on my keyboard, I can select all of these and insert them at the same time rather than coming back and forth to this catalog here. And then I know that we also need, we're going to have some bracing in this structural framing um, at a lower level that we'll need to establish. But that lower beam is actually going to be a 12 by 26. So let's go back down the list to our 12 by 26 and hold down control so that you don't lose your other selections. And we're just going to hit OK here. And we're going to accept and override. So once again, I'm going to start on the interior. And we know that our interior beams here on this column line, column grid line 2, are all going to be this W16 by 40. So I'm going to select that on my properties, my W1640. And I can actually select on grids. And you'll see it's going to insert that all the way through. And if I click finish here, all of my beams will be inserted there. So let's go ahead and put the other ones in. We know around our exterior, 
we're going to have our upper column, our upper beam, I'm sorry, is going to be this W16 by 31. And that's going to be all the way around the perimeter. So if I select that family type for the W16 by 31, and we're going to do at grids once again, if I select here, and we'll click finish. And then we're going to continue to follow suit here. I'm going to hold down my control so that I can multiple select. And I'm going to click finish. And if we go back to this 3D view now, you should see we have our perimeter beams inserted. So let's go back to this structural plans top of steel view again. Now in the direction that we'll be spanning for the project we have our W16 by 31s as well. So let's come back up to our beam tool on grids and I'm just going to select holding down control you see my little plus sign at my cursor I'm going to select each one of these and click finish now I have all my beams inserted the next thing I want us to do is we need to add a level because around a portion of our building where we're going to eventually model the storefront, we're going to need some horizontal bracing to help support that. So I'm going to escape out of my place beam tool. I'm actually going to come back here to an elevation view. So let me scroll down a little bit. I'm going to open up my north elevation and we're going to have some bracing in this area. And I want to create a level that this bracing will be associated with so that in the event that we need to modify it, it's very easy. We don't have to move one beam at a time. We can move them all because they'll be associated with a level. So I'm just going to come in here and click add a level. And I know that this level is going to be nine feet above the floor. So now that it's inserted it, I'm actually gonna change this to a level, I'm gonna call it 1B. Now I'm gonna rename the view so that I know what this means for me. And this is gonna be a nine foot elevation. All right. So now if I come back into this horizontal bracing level in my structural plan, we can create some beams that will provide that additional support for the storefront. And we know that that's gonna be a W12 by 26 beam. And that actually runs from column line C. And it's gonna wrap the perimeter on this edge and we're gonna complete it up here at column line C1. So let's go ahead and insert that. We just come up here to our beam tool again. Like we said, this is our 12 by 26 that's going to be used for the horizontal bracing. The placement level, you see it's set by the view I was in, 1B. So just select. There's our first piece of horizontal bracing and we're just going to run this like I said around the building on the exterior to support the eventual storefront that we're going to model in this area so this really is all the bracing that we should see at this level because it only extends like I said down to column line C 
I always like to take a look back at my 3D view just to confirm that we have what we're looking for here. So as you can see in the 3D view now, we have horizontal bracing in this area where we're going to have storefront. And we've also placed in our beams and girders that we're going to use for framing the roof. I hope this video has been helpful for you.